I mean, people say that all religions are basically the same and superficially different. No, religions are all superficially the same and basic and fundamentally different. You know, I mean, their their beliefs are way out there, and they're and 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 I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody, but you just we, we need to know this. I mean, <laughs> it's it's very important. Um, so, what time is it? Twelve forty-six. Yeah. All right. So we got another forty-five minutes of fun here, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, you, does anybody have any questions that are that are questions and not true statements? Anybody have any questions that I can answer? You got any, Paul? All right. Um, okay. Then I guess I'll tell you guys a little bit of my testimony then. Um, when I when I was a demoniac, I would pull my own teeth out. My teeth would rot so much that I'd just rip them out. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I was always constantly worried about what other people thought, and, and I and I would and and I was I would go around and I would use my gift, uh, and I would deceive people into giving me money, and um, and and I I was quite well. I mean, I I. I, oh yeah, yeah. I was not a good person, you know. And, and um, but I, I, I was spiritually sick. Not to bl put any blame on on the enemy because I'm accountable for my actions. But um, just to give you guys to help you understand a little about what God's done in my life, um, you know, I would, uh, I, I was very violent. You know, I, I didn't like to fight. I, I really didn't. But I would put up a front so that it, it, so that people would leave me alone. I mean, I, I worked for generals in Central America. I'd never been in the military. They didn't know that. I told them I was a special ops. Well, I shouldn't say that on YouTube. But I was, I would lie to them. And, but I worked for four generals down there. And, and so it tells you that I was pretty convincing. You know, um, one time I, I went to what's called a Puerta Negra, uh, a, a mafia bar. And I didn't know it at the time, but it's in this big fancy neighborhood with police gates that you have to go through the police to get to the neighborhood. And, and, but inside, it was actually ran by the state police, like one of the captains or something of the state police. And, and so I go in there and, hey, and, and this guy, the, he's, he's showing me his pictures of his, him in his uniform and stuff. And, and, it, cause it's the same thing down there. The mafia, the, the, the police, it's the same thing. You know, they, they, well, they work for, they work for us. Well, they work for them. And so, um, but I go into this mafia bar and I'm in there arm wrestling bodyguards for beers, right? And, and I didn't realize, but I'm in there with like heads of Telmex and Cemex and Comex and Pemex, these big companies down there, and, and generals and football players and, and you know, singers. They had, they had professional singers, famous singers in there, famous football players, and they even sang a song about me because I never told anybody I was American. I'd always tell them I was from Australia or Russia or anywhere but America. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And... And so this, the, the Comandante of SWAT comes in from DF, the District of Federal, the, the capital of the country. The, the commander of SWAT comes in, and, and I tell him, I say, look, I'll train you guys in tactics mil militares, tacticals militares, armas, bombas, I, I'll train you guys in all this stuff, right? And, and uh, give me a job, right? And because I would do that, I learned down there, instead of being a bodyguard, it's better to train bodyguards because you live longer. <laughs> so... So I, I would work on these security details, and so I would pick their brains and learn from them. Like, because I was a phony. I was a fake. <laughs> but I would pick these guys that were the real McCoy. I'd pick their brains and learn all this stuff. I mean, they taught me how to open up anything that takes a key with a cigarette filter, saliva, and two thumbnails. And two thumbnails. Oh, Yeah, in the Guatemalan prison, this actually a CIA guy taught me this. They were corralling me into the prison, and I hear... And I, and I hear him tell me, take off your clothes and get in the shower. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get five or six of y'all, right? And, and, and then I hear in English, don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't like that. I'm like, what? He goes, it ain't like that, man. He goes, they just want to check your, the hems of your clothing for gun, money and drugs. I'm like, I can't. I'm American, man. I can't sew. You know? <laughs> so, so we go in there. And I go in there, and, and this, this guy's telling me how he'd been down there since the 80s, and, and, and he cooked crack in the prison. Right? That's what he did all day. He cooked crack. I said, man, if you can open up that door, why don't you leave? Because he told me, he said, why don't you go tell them cops if you can open up the door if they won't let you go? I said, I can't open up that door. He goes, go get a cigarette. So I go and I get a cigarette. And I come back. And he goes, no, don't light it. He says, you take the filter out. 
you shred the filter into like a fluffy pilt, like a cloud, right? And then you take this thumbnail, peel it off, and you pack this cigarette filter into the keyhole, right? Nice and tight. Then you push saliva in there, you take this thumbnail, and you put it in the keyhole, and you put a little pressure, and you just wait. And the, the filter will suck the saliva in and swell up and push the tumblers in spot. Bam, it opens up, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, so I told him, I said, well, why don't, I said, why don't you leave? I mean, if you could leave the printer, why don't you leave? And he goes, he goes, man, he goes, I like crack. He goes, <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, he goes, I can leave whenever I want. But, and so the guy, he was actually truly, after he told me that, I, I believed him that he was CIA. But he'd been down there for the Dole Fruit Company since the 80s. And, and, and God delivered me out of this prison. You got to understand down there, they feed you once a day. Once a day. There's a line of people. Yeah. And, and, and you're at the end of the line. And, and you're the biggest guy in the prison in Guatemala. That's the best thing about Guatemalan prisons is you're the biggest guy because they're all this tall. They're all Mayan, right? And, and so they, all, they were going to give me 20 years because I attacked the commander of the police that was uh, protecting these child pornography ring people down in Antigua and like our senators and governors and stuff that go down there and, uh, and they buy Guatemalan kids. And so I was very angry about this. And yeah, our government is very, very, very sick. They're, they're very sick people that need to repent. Very sick. And that's why, I can, that's why you hear me constantly praying, Lord, give us godly men and women in positions of authority so that we can live peaceable lives. This pleases the Lord. Well, we need to pray for them, guys. We need to pray for them constantly. I mean, I, it's fast. Cry out to them. Spend yourself on behalf of them because this is very important. Um, because they're, they're in bondage. They're in bondage to the enemy. They're in bondage to Satan. I mean, wickedly in bondage. I mean, horribly. Ho horribly. I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, ho uh, <laughs> I can't say it in English. My, sometimes i got to translate from Spanish to English in my mind on certain words. But... But it's very sad, you know. It's very, very sad uh, to see what I see, what I see, what I learned down there about our government. Not good. I mean, not good. And I, I can't talk about most of it, but um, you know, it's it's very sad. Well, the FBI told me not to try to do any books or movies, but just go get a because HBO and Netflix want to do a documentary on me, and because I was formally expelled out of Mexico for organized crime in July 2011. At the same time, an FBI agent got killed by an ATF gun in San Luis Posto C. And so uh, it was a big problem. It's, it's where they got the movie, uh, the, the Fast and the Furious. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I wasn't a part of that, but I was being formally expelled. Like that show, yeah. It was pretty good, though. Yeah. Me and my friend here were just talking about this this morning. The director of the ATF punished himself by stepping down. Yeah, it crashed his Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, see, because the, the, tomorrow's not promised. You know, tomorrow's not promised. God will call out to us and, 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 and draw us to Him. Because it's like this. His mercy and His grace are holding His wrath back, right? And, and, and He's in His grace and mercy saying, Come, come, come to me. And then after a while, His Spirit will not strive with us forever. After a while, he'll, the, the wrath of God is coming. The, end, the eschatology, the, end of, the study of the end of end times, it, it's not, it, it doesn't speak of the last day as something that time is moving forward to. It speaks of something as something that could burst in on, on us in the original text. It speaks of it as something that could burst in on us at any moment. Any moment, Christ could come back. At any moment. There's nothing else that needs to happen for Christ to come back. The apostles were, they were looking up. And then the angel came and said, what are you guys looking at? Well, we're waiting for him to come back. You know, he said he's going to come back. Like he was just going to go out and then come back. You know, and then he goes, hey, he'll come back the way he left. You know, and so, yeah, we want to be hopeful in this. We want to be excited about this. I'm, I, you know, you can't really live. And I think, um, what was his name? Como se dice? The, the, the Billy Graham. Uh, whenever I quote people, I'd like to give their name because I don't want to take credit for anybody's stuff. But Billy Graham said it like this. Nobody, you can't really live until you're prepared to die. Yes. And in fact, I'm looking forward to it. And I agree with that. I, I am looking for, I agree with Billy Graham because I too am looking forward to it. Death is not a bad thing. Death, when it speaks of death in the original text, it speaks of it as departing from a temporal domain to an eternal domain. 
in eternal domain. When I died, in, when I died here on a on a drug OD, I uh, OD'd here years ago. I I I knew I was going to a place that was permanent. You know it. And I and I hung over hell, and it, and it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Well, in a sense, in a sense, in in uh, 